in this episode, we're going to talk about the different forecasting models. I want to give you an introduction of what are the, what are the, the, the trend and what, what is the best way to choose as well after your forecasting model. Okay, so first of all, I did many surveys about, okay, what are you using today? And I, I share this with my network, with my community. And just to give you one example uh, on LinkedIn, you can follow me if you don't follow me today or even invite me. <laughs> we do have many people using, you know, very basic, you know, manual intuition or crystal ball or moving average. We have also like different topics around exponential smoothing, machine learning, etc. But just to give you an idea and on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm followed by, I would say, many people are already professional and experts. So this is even not representative the reality of like many companies or they have nothing or they have some, some models very basic. And you know what? Sometimes it's okay to keep it simple. <laughs> Why? Because one I've been asking if you join one of my webinar with my friend Mario from Amazon, he was, he is the forecasting expert of, uh, and he, he's been developing a, a lot of models for them for, for many years. One I asked him, okay, what is the best model? The answer was not necessarily the most complex. And, uh, <laughs> and as we explained with inventory management, for me, it's all about your forecast maturity process. Are you ready to include more complexity? Are you ready to use machine learning today? Maybe not, and it's okay. And the more you will add complexity, the more technically you should get accuracy. But at one, at one point, it's going to stabilize or it's going to crash. It's going to crash because you have way too many parameters. And uh, like in inventory management, uh, if you want to implement, for example, oh, I want to use the weather forecast in my uh, demand forecast for the next 14 uh, days. It's very complex. And I've been working on these projects with Decathlon and other clients. And on the paper, it looks very smart, but it's almost impossible to implement because, for example, you are selling a, a shirt like a summer shirt and you want to buy more when it's warmer. But what, what is warm? Because in, uh, in France, for example, warm can be 25 degrees. But when you are in Brazil, 25 is cold. You need a lot of data point. You need to have, you have different correlation based on the type of product. So it's very, very, very complex. And at the end, even Amazon is not using that many data points uh, to forecast. And the one we already have in the Excel are a very good start. Okay. So now if I go back to the different forecasting models, the goal is not to give you a mathematical uh, like a review. Uh, you don't have to become a data scientist or a mathematician for that. But you have different phase. The first one is not having forecasts and it's okay to have no forecast. I think this is the best solution. <laughs> you just wait your client, for example, uh, to confirm the order to buy or to produce. So you don't have to forecast, right? You do everything that what we call make to order. You can also use what we call naive forecasting. My last month's forecast is equal to my current month's forecast or last week. It's, it can be efficient if you are very stable or if you have very short lead time, you don't need to over complexify all of it. Then you are moving to what we call statistical forecast with, we're going to use historical data, seasonality, baseline trends, level, and we're going to talk about it after. This is the, like, I would say that most of the, most of the company and people should master this, um, this environment, uh, because this is quite efficient. And if you have enough historical data, you can have very good results uh, for that. Then you can, what we call, enrich your forecast by adding commercial or external inputs. For example, oh, I'm going to include the next promotions or I'm going to include, like, I'm going to, cor I'm going to start correcting uh, what happened in the past to correct the future. Uh, so you can have many, many uh, different inputs. <laughs> then we are moving to demand modeling. We are using what we call multidimensional factors. And the last step will be to uh, go towards machine learning where the, you're going to feed the model and the model will basically learn by itself and give you like a kind of a secret formula, which is, can be very random. The, the principle of machine learning is you don't have to explain them. They're going to multiply by random numbers to find like at one point a good solution <laughs> to uh, implement to your, to your company. Uh, but this can be also very, very complex because you need a lot of data and you need a lot of expertise on this. Otherwise, 
you could have better results <laughs> with a naive forecast or statistical forecasting as well. Okay, so that was just to give you an overview. And uh, one more time, you can have more accuracy, but also much more complexity. And your, your challenge is really to find the balance between the level of maturity of your, your systems and uh, your ab ability to forecast and also the, uh, uh, the complexity you will implement to your company. So I'll see you for the next video and we're going to talk about how to choose the right level or to choose the forecasting model. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video about forecasting. If you want to go much deeper about uh, how to forecast and have better accuracy, I, I do have a new free masterclass called Generate More Accurate Forecasts. And during 60 minutes, I'm going to share with you, uh, with my friend from Amazon, Mario, uh, an expert in machine learning and forecasting, we're going to tell you how to become a forecasting expert, how to deal with demand uncertainty, who wants the forecast, what are the best forecasting models, the best tools uh, to forecast. Is it Python? Is it uh, ChatGPT Copilot? Uh, what is the best tools for that? And what is the future of uh, forecasting the next uh, 20 years? Because we have a lot of change happening with real examples from Amazon, Decathlon, uh, Tesla, and I'm going to give you a free Excel, a free forecast generator to generate forecasts in less than five minutes during this masterclass. So if you are curious, you can check below this video. And for your information, we also provide other free masterclass about inventory management, one of my favorite topics as well, how to reduce stockouts and overstocks. How, what are the best KPIs and dashboards in supply chain to have better performance? How to automate your task on Excel? I'm going to give you example and free Excel with Power Query. How to implement an efficient and collaborative SNP process? And what are the best strategies to become a supply chain expert and leader? So if you are curious, you can check below this video. Thank you for supporting us. Subscribe, like, and I see you very soon. Thank <laughs> you.